There we go. A bunch of yeses. All right. I didn't want to have 50% of you not see what we're doing. All right. We'll go ahead and continue now. So obviously a quick disclaimer. Uh, lawyers make us put us in there. Um, you know, do your own research. Don't make investment based on just what I say. Uh, pretty much what this says. So what I'm about to show you, I'm about to show you how the stock picking genius of Wall Street's wealthiest investors uh, can be used to get better returns, even the more that they deliver to their own shareholders. And it might seem incredible, especially when you consider facts like these. And it's going to surprise a lot of people, but if you'd put a thousand, hundred thousand dollars with Soros and Jim Rogers back when they teamed up to run the quantum fund, in just ten years that hundred thousand would have grown to four point two million. And these are the kind of returns we are trying to mimic. Or if you put a hundred, or you know, ten grand with Buffett back in '64 when he started, you'd now be worth over hundred and five million dollars. Carl Icahn. $10,000 with ICON when he started it would be worth over $2.3 billion today. And so it's no surprise he's one of the 50, 50 wealthiest individuals in the world. These men and a few others are to investing what Pablo Picasso was to painting. Their genius is that even the pros on Wall Street marvel at. So the question I get is how can you use their genius to build your own portfolio faster than they do for their own shareholders? Now here's the example I like to give. Imagine you can sit at a round table with Buffett, Icon, Soros, and all these other Wall Street titans. And each day these geniuses would tell you, hey, tomorrow I'm going to start buying 50 million shares of this little known stock. You should buy as much as you can tomorrow because it will take me a couple of months to buy up that many shares. Now you'd be in a powerful position because compared to these guys, any time you invest less than $10 million, you're still working with a tiny amount of money compared to what they're doing. So you'd be able to invest in the stocks they're buying and you get three big benefits, one short term and two long term. First in the short term, you'd catch the price run up as they started buying millions of shares of the stock, simply buying pressure. It can literally take months for some of these billionaire investors to buy all the shares they need for a single stock position. Second, in the long term, you'd be buying into the same stocks that these investors are loading up on. That'd give you the benefit of having Warren Buffett, George Soros, Jim Rogers, Icon, these other titans as your personal stock pickers. And third, none of these guys sit idly by when things go wrong. For example, when there's a problem with a company that Warren Buffett invests in, he goes to great lengths to protect his investment. To the point there have been times he's taken over the management of a company invested in just to make sure that his investment is protected. Carl Icahn, as we all know, is another extremely active investor. And he and these other men don't let bad managers ruin a great investment. So when you're buying alongside them, you also get, as I mentioned previously, the same level of professional protection they demand for their own money. Now you're probably thinking that's great, it's never going to happen. Warren Buffett, Icon, Soros, the rest of these guys are never going to sit me down and tell me what they're about to buy. And you're right, they'd never do it if they weren't forced to. But they are forced to by the Securities and Exchange Commission. Each of these geniuses is required by law to file a form called the 13F. Now the 13F is perhaps the most powerful instrument for tapping into the minds of the most brilliant fund managers in existence. And it's public information. In it, each of these money managers is required by law to publicly expose all the stock positions of their funds. And they have to do it four times a year because they're forced to disclose this on a regular basis. And as you're about to see if you're smart, you can use that information to make a lot of money fairly quickly in the stock market. Icon's hedge fund, as I mentioned, has produced a total return of 1,485% since the turn of the millennium. The Dow Jones and the S&P, 90 and 123% of the same period. So we look at that in comparison. It's not only an outperformance, it's an enormous outperformance. 
So if you look at the numbers, in other words, investing with Carl Icahn is enough to turn 10 grand into 158 and a half, while the same money invested in the S&P 500 index only grew to 19,000. So these are the kind of ideas we're looking to piggyback, guys. And I'll give you an example. This is just last year, February 15, 2014, when his 13F was filed. Soros kind of gave us a big Easter egg uh, when we looked at his 13F. And it showed that his hedge fund had purchased almost 2.5% of the outstanding shares of Batalto Holdings, which is a small internet media company headquartered in the Cayman Islands. Now, is this something you saw on CNBC that's talked about in the journal? No. But if you'd bought BITA when his 13F was released, when it became public knowledge, you'd have made 180% in just seven months as the stock ran from $35 to over 98 so investing alongside this 13F is the same as tapping into the minds of the investors who've built multi-billion dollar fortunes through their ability to pick stocks. And again, the crazy part is that as of today, the 13F is public information. It's a filing report released through the Securities and Exchange Commission that everyone, including you, can access. Now, I've been a licensed advisor, as Raleigh mentioned. I've managed portfolios for a lot of wealthy investors. And I started using the 13F to develop strategy designed to outperform the market by analyzing the trading of the world's best money managers. I spent hours poring over countless 13Fs, and I realized we've got a unique advantage over these top fund managers. You see, when Buffett and Tepper, some of the greatest investors in the history of the market, when they invest, they have a major disadvantage as managers. They trade billions of dollars, and they, when, when they invest in a stock, it is typically with a massive amount of capital. They can't just wake up one morning and decide to buy 50 million shares of a $10, million, a $10 stock. The market doesn't work that way. It takes weeks or even months for one of these Wall Street whales to enter a large position. And the same goes when they want to get out of a position. They need to unwind their stock holdings over time. They're, they're the boating equivalent of a freight liner where things would be a whole lot better if they were a speedboat. And you'll see quotes from Buffett where he'll, he'll be honest and say, look, we can't outperform as well today. We're managing $200 billion. I've heard him say, look, if I was managing a million dollars, I'd be making 50% a year right now. And it's simply because of this fact that they have to forecast their moves and it takes a long time to get in and out of stocks. Now, as an individual investor, you can move quickly in and out of positions. And this gives you a decidedly strong advantage over these fund managers. If you can look at their holdings and see what they're going to do as they are doing it, you can use this disadvantage to often outperform these legends. And outdoing Carl Icahn's 15-year run, in which he outperformed the S&P 500 16 times over, would be one amazing feat. Now, according to a recent CNBC report, they said, quote, buying stocks that are the targets of activists, such as Carl Icahn and Bill Ackman, beats the market, according to a study this week from S&P Capital IQ. The winning returns, this is the important part, were based on buying after the activist stakes were filed with the SEC, meaning investors don't have to get the same price as these heavy hitters to ride their coattails successfully. Now take, for example, the great Julian Robertson. He's kind of the godfather of hedge funds. Robertson founded Tiger Management in 1980, turned it into over $22 billion in the late 90s. Now in early 2010, again, using his 13F, we saw that he began buying shares of Skyworks Solutions, which is a manufacturer of smartphone components. The stock was fresh off of a $3.57% share low just a year prior. Now, Viking Global Investors, a $12 billion hedge fund run by a couple of Robertson's former traders, followed suit over the next few years and began gobbling up shares along other well-known funds. So this is where the 13 f is so powerful. You see what everyone's doing. You see Robertson's buying up a big position. You see all his boys used to work for him. They're now on their own. They're following suit and buying up position. And what happened? The stock has since exploded. It hit a high of 105.99 back in May. 
Now, as an individual investor, you had plenty of time to pick up a position of your own. Your shares were below $14 as late as December 2011, and you had the opportunity to make $67,200 in profit on every 10 grand invested. Simply put, the 13F is a gold mine for investors, and now I'm going to show you step by step exactly how it works. Now I'm going back to desktop sharing. If some of you don't, some of you should be seeing uh, Google Internet Browser right now. Uh, if you don't, I apologize. You'll see it on the recording. But here's how you access this information. It's all public. And we're just going to go to sec.gov. That's the Securities and Exchange Commission website. Now, once here, one of the top headings is filings. If you see that drop down there, and we're going to go to company filing search. Okay, and this is where you could find annual reports for companies or what hedge funds are doing. So let's take Bill Ackman, for example. Most people know uh, of Bill, his firm. We're going to use his firm, which is Pershing Square Capital Management. So we're going to put that into the search box and click search. Now, if you enter the name correctly, you're going to see all of his filings here. Now, what we're looking for is that 13F. So that can be found one, two, three down, uh, quarterly report filed by institutional managers. And we're just going to click the documents heading there to the left. Now below we're going to see the files for that. Now they're in different formats. Focus on the HTML formats. Those are the ones that are going to show up fine on your browser. So we're just going to click on the 13F info table. Now here we see all of his holdings as of the most recent quarter. So now it's time to analyze the data, right? And you can do a couple of things. I will generally just copy and paste this because there's no export option. But what I'm showing you guys, if you can't see it on the screen, um, it's fairly easy. Just kind of listen along. It'll only take two or three minutes, and we'll go back to slides. You can see what we're talking about. But if we copy this information, we bring up an Excel file. And we just paste this in. And now we have all of his positions. Now what I like to do is filter this by the size of their holdings. So if we do, like I'll just do a quick custom sort here. Most of you guys know how to do this stuff. Um, sort it by largest to smallest. And now we've got his biggest positions, right? His largest position here is Valiant Pharmaceuticals, followed by Air Products, Canadian Pack Dry. Look. For those of you who can't see it, Agman's holding a very small portfolio right now. I'm just looking at an Excel spreadsheet with eight stocks listed, um, the, the, the amount of the total holdings, and how many shares he has, right? So this right now is showing you Bill Agman's portfolio. But what you want to do, a lot of people will see this and say, okay, he owns these eight stocks. Perfect. He's a genius. He makes tons of money. I'm going to go buy these eight stocks. But there's a little bit more to it than that. You want to know not only what he's holding, but where he bought it and where the stock is now. So take Howard Hughes Corp, for example, his second to smallest holding. What you don't see here is that he actually bought this stock around 2010, 20 or 30 bucks a share. It's now trading over $200 a share. In the last eight or 10 quarters, he's not picked up a single additional position. So look, do we want to piggyback this one? Probably not. He picked up this stock. It's already up several hundred percent. We're a little late to the party. Now, Valiant, for example, is a new holding. That's the one he picked up in the most recent quarter. It's within 5% of where he bought it, and it's still an opportunity to piggyback. 
But to know all this, and I'll go back to the slides, you need to compare this quarter's 13F filings with previous ones. Only then are you going to be able to determine if the hedge fund is buying a position or working their way out of one. In the case of Howard Hughes, as I mentioned, it's already up more than 200%, and we'll likely see the share count drop in the coming quarters, and this will be evidence he's begun to liquidate his position and take profits. Now, if a stock disappears from next quarter's 13F filing, you know that he's sold out of the position. And that's important information to have. If he's dumping a stock and he thinks the value has been reached, we may want to say, hey, maybe it's time for us to get out. Now, on the other hand, this next filing is going to show up uh, middle of August, so we've got about two weeks left till the next filings come out. If we find new stocks pop up that weren't on there prior, then we have new buys. Now, in order for you to focus only on their highest conviction trades, I like to concentrate on what the fund is buying or selling right now and at what price. I don't really care about what the fund bought or sold in the past because that doesn't help me make an investment decision today. The only thing you want to look up for a fund's old positions is to compare today's share price with its history. So let's say that one of your followed hedge funds bought up a large position in XYZ Corp in the second quarter of last year. If, however, the stock has already climbed to over 100, you may want to rethink your trade. And this is going to happen from time to time. But more times than not, the stock prices haven't moved much between the time the trade was placed and when that 13F becomes publicly filed. Remember, most of these hedge funds are managing billions of dollars. They can't just enter a buy at market order and get instant execution in their E-Trade account like you and I can. They've got brokers on the floor trying to buy up shares over the course of several weeks. To buy tens of millions of shares takes weeks, sometimes even months. But that's the process to find what these stocks, hedge fund, what stocks these hedge funds are buying and selling. Now, I recommend going through at least the last eight quarters to get a good grasp of what the plan is with each stock. Now, if you're advanced with Excel, obviously, you've got a leg up. You can put formulas in place to analyze the data and even program macros to pull that data from either the SEC site or a qualified Bloomberg data feed. And you'll want to do this for each of the hedge funds you follow. These guys are known for betting the farm on big ideas, and every once in a while, they don't go exactly as planned. So find at least 10 proven hedge funds to track and follow. This way, you have a few dozen quality ideas to diversify your portfolio with. Now, I personally have a select group of 55 that I've been following for years, and the rewards have been phenomenal. Now, a few cautions to doing this before you venture off. First, you have to recognize a good time to enter a trade versus when it's a bad time. Timing is everything, as you all know. And following the best traders and analysts in the world only works if you know how to time your entry and exit. The 13F's historical report should sort of speak to you and give you clues to this timing. Doing a little bit of your own additional analysis on the positions is critical as well. Second, you should understand how to identify the best opportunities from the research you are doing. One of the biggest failures amongst individual investors is discerning the bad opportunities from the good ones and the good ones from the great ones. So if you haven't figured it out by now, I'm a fairly straight shooter. You can go out and do your own 13F research to trade like the best fund managers in the business do. But if you'd like some help, I'm already doing all of this work on a regular basis, like I have for years, and I'm happy to share it with you if you want. Now, I've got a team here. My team and I scour the 13F seeking the best and most timely opportunities. We tap into the experience gained by our many years in the market to try to isolate the trades with all the telltale signs of a monster winner. Now, then we consolidate it into a monthly trade alert and research report that gives you all the information you need to make an intelligent, informed investment decision. 
Now you'll receive this information in real time as I release it to my 13F Insider members via email alert. I'll guide you every step of the way to leveraging the 13F secret to change your financial future. So what you're going to get when you do this type of research, you get the best ideas from top hedge fund managers like Icon, Buffett, Tepper, Soros, and others. I only focus on the creme de la creme. You'll be able to stop wasting time digging through stock lists, using screeners, and watching CNBC for top picks. The 13F Insider lets the billionaire investors do the heavy lifting for you. You get to buy and sell alongside the Buffets and Icons and Soroses of the world to generate outsized returns in shorter periods of time. Plus, you'll get in-depth portfolio analysis. What you want to know is, are these billionaire investors building up a position in the cloud storage space, decreasing exposure in Europe, adding leverage to the use of options, taking profits, or averaging down on an existing position? You'll get the benefit of the hundreds of hours my entire research team and I put into researching the 13F filings, but you won't have to spend a minute doing the research yourself. You'll get a clear, concise report detailing only the highest probability stocks and trades of Wall Street insiders who collectively oversee trillions in investor capital and whose actions can and do move the market. Now, I also aggregate the data from a large number of 13Fs from the biggest players in Wall Street. And what this does, it tells me exactly which stocks and sectors have the biggest cash inflows and outflows. I give you that report too, so you always know where the big money is flowing. With 13F Insider, you won't waste your time on hope because you can just cherry pick the top ideas of Wall Street's top performers. Wealthy investors put $5 million, $10 million, even $50 million or more into these massive funds in order to get the trade ideas of these top performing investors. And with Wall Street's common 2% minimum charge in their portfolios, that means these investors are paying $100,000, 200000 even a $1 million a year in fees, plus 20% of all profits. Well, the 13F Insider are going to get the same trade ideas that they pay to get, but for almost nothing. Now, obviously, if so many investors pay hundreds of thousands of dollars to get the trade ideas that we uncover and send out in the 13F Insider service, we could easily charge $1,000 or $2,000 like so many other alert services out there. We don't charge thousands, even $400, even $250. I wanted to make this available to as many investors as possible, so I priced the service at an even better price. If you want to do this for an entire year, you can do it for only $99. And I know that you'll get so much value from the service that I'll back it with a double guarantee. First, you can cancel any time for a prorated refund of the unused months of your subscription. And I also back it with a performance guarantee, which very few people do. If the 13F Insider recommendations do not beat the S&P 500 index over the course of your subscription, just drop me a note and receive a 100% refund of your entire first year subscription cost. Now, if you order today, I've actually got a special fast action bonus that we're going to offer to you guys as well. Um, you know, the other secret of the success of these billionaires like Buffett and Icon, besides their ability to pick great stocks, is their ability to avoid financial disasters. And today as a special insider bonus, I'm going to send you a special report no investor should be without. It's called Mr. and Mrs. International, the new you. Now, this report can literally save you thousands, perhaps millions in taxes while simultaneously protecting your family from unscrupulous lawsuits and unnecessary personal liability. It's no secret governments around the world today are working harder and harder to tax those of us who stand on our own feet. Financial protection is becoming as important to your retirement as financial growth. Now, what this report does, it'll show you how to plan out and protect your personal financial empire by learning how to arm yourself with the secrets of offshore asset protection. I spent years crafting the perfect global wealth building plan and it all starts with learning how to do what I call internationalizing yourself. The center of your universe these days 
isn't your city, your state, or even your country. It is, in fact, the entire world. Thanks to the Internet and the globalization of the financial world, you're now able to tap into a wealth of international investment strategies, tax shelters, and asset protection opportunities. Now, your membership in the 13F shows you how to build great wealth, and this special report shows you how to keep that wealth. Have you ever wondered how the world's richest individuals pay next to nothing in taxes? Learn the tax and liability benefits and the often overlooked disadvantages of offshore capital, corporate structures, banking, and more. Learn how to set up your own insurance company to write off millions of dollars in taxable income. Get the real story behind why every American needs a family trust and how to leverage it to protect your assets against lawsuits, seizure, and other legal issues that put your, risk, your wealth at risk every day. You can use this report to discover how to use a life insurance policy to increase your borrowing power by hundreds of thousands or even millions of dollars. Now, Mr. and Mrs. International, the new you has received praise as a must-read for any serious wealth builder. And I'm going to include this detailed report absolutely free just for joining 13F Insider. Regardless of whether you decide to cancel your 13F Insider subscription or not, Mr. and Mrs. International, the new you is yours to keep with my compliments. So what are you waiting for? Wealth of knowledge and information awaits you for just, it's usually $199. I did a trading pub special for just $99. Um, you can act now and join the family. Remember, you have a full year to test the service out. Now here's the link, wealthempire.com forward slash trading pub. If at any time you're not thrilled with your membership, drop me a note and I'll refund the remaining portion of your position, your membership. Now I had a few questions I want to address those. How often do we get alerts? So first of all, the $99 is for an entire year. It's not a monthly fee. It will renew one year from now, but you can cancel at any time. Second, the reports come out on a monthly basis, and I'll show you one here in just a second that detail what top hedge funds are doing. Now every once in a while, I'll send a mid-month alert. I sent one two weeks ago on a big stock being gobbled up by a top manager, uh, BioTi Therapies, B-I-T-I -I is the ticker, a monster position. I want investors to know about it. Um, so you'll get those occasionally, probably not really often. Though. Mainly it's a monthly report. So let me show you what these look like. Uh, I'll pull up the June report. I know I'm going to get some angry people here because you can't see. Now, some of you probably can. So let me go to the desktop sharing here. And the 13F, it is a monthly report. It goes out each month. But this is what it looks like. Now, in June, we focused on David Tepper's Appaloosa Management. I'll go ahead and give you a big trade here. And yes, most of these are optionable stocks. So Look, we go through kind of the history of this fund, what it's done, um, and his big pick. Now, David Tepper's big pick for 2015 and 2016, you ready, is General Motors, GM. Now, that's not a sexy stock. It's not a biotech. It's not a 3D printer. Most people think, ah, what are you going to make, 5% a year? Believe it or not, we think General Motors could double in the next 18 months. And I'll show you why. Obviously, it's coming. Uh, we give you in this report a very in-depth analysis of the stock, what the future looks like, why we think it's going to grow. Um, we give you what other hedge fund managers are buying this stock. So if you're not seeing this on the screen, we've got other fund managers listed here, Buffett, Tepper, Hotchkiss and Wiley, Bill Nigren, that are all buying into this stock. We show you what the current fund is buying, all of his new buys for the most recent quarter, how many shares, how much of his portfolio any positions he's added to, any positions he's sold from, his full core portfolio with percentages showing you exactly where the most of his money is going. In addition, what I got to do is aggregate what I call the top 55 on a quarterly basis. So once a quarter, the report is much thicker. That's when all the filings come out. I'll show you, hey, these are the top 55 fund managers in the world. This is what they're buying. This is the biggest stocks they're getting into. This is the sectors and, and areas they're getting into, getting out of. This is their top holdings. Uh, for example, right now, this is the last quarter. The, the big stocks of the top 55 are Valiant, Activist, General Motors, eBay, and Apple. Now, eBay likely was a big holding because they wanted PayPal. GM, I'll share with you why they're buying that. Valiant's a monster. Apple, we know, has been a monster. 
And so we also gave specific recommendations. Here we had a recommendation to buy General Motors, we're buying Chicago Bridge and Iron, we're buying Micron Technology, and we'll tell you exactly what we're buying, what price, why we're recommending getting in there, uh, and then obviously some questions answered from subscribers. So Gary, getting questions here on the track record. Yeah, so I mean, believe it or not, I know it sounds like a comp out. They won't let me share my exact tracker, but I can tell you I've been beating the market using this strategy. Now, the the deal with track record is this. I could put, you know, 2% of my portfolio on each one of these stocks. I could take the ideas I like the most and put, you know, 50% of my portfolio into one. Track records are difficult because you have to manage a complete portfolio. Yes, MUBC. So I'll give you this, and I, I and and just fair disclaimer, I am long General Motors. I do own it in my personal account. The way I will address these stocks, look, I don't believe in buy long term, buy and hold, perfect diversification, 10% in Europe, 15% in bonds, all that BS. That's not how you make fortunes. That's not how you grow account to seven, eight, nine figures. To do so, you have to bet heavy on your best ideas, period. The traders in here know this. You're never going to get wealthy tracking the index. What you need to do is put your dollars to work in top ideas. And look, if David Tepper, the top guy on Wall Street, is telling me his big idea is General Motors, I'm not going to put 2% of my portfolio in that. I'm going to bet heavier on it, and I can use options for it. I can use, you can use leap contracts to buy General Motors future till January 2017 and capture all that upside and risk only a couple of bucks a share. And that's kind of how, how we address the markets, how we invest capital. Um, I believe you have to go heavy into your top ideas. And look, if you don't trust yourself as a great market analyst or as, you know, some wizard with a magic crystal ball, follow the 13F Insider. I'm giving you the top ideas of the top guys on Wall Street who have been doing this for 30 years. If they're all going to lose money, there's no hope for any of us. Now, Joe, yes, most of the recommendations are optionable stocks. You know, think about it. If you're a hedge fund, you're managing $20 billion, you can't get into a lot of penny stocks. There's just not enough room there for you. So generally, they're buying into large cap stocks, which for the most part are optionable companies. Now, again, the link here, wealthempire.com forward slash trading pub, $99 an entire year, cancel any time. We do have another guest coming on. I want to introduce him really quick. I think he's going to share something important with us. Now, there's a lot going on in the market these days, uh, more so than probably any time in history, right? We've got Greece crisis going on. We've got rate hikes. We've got war all over the Middle East. We've got a crude uh, slump going down. We've got gold, big opportunities in gold, I think, through, the, through the, some gold miners ETF. And I want to bring on one of Wealth Empire's personal mentors. His name is Gordon Scott. He's been in the markets for a lot of years, got a lot of great experience. He's helped a lot of traders and investors. And he's going to share with us his strategies for crisis investing. So, Gordon, if you're on, if you want to queue up your slides, whatever you want to share here, uh, come on and share with us your knowledge and kind of put us at ease here uh, with the crisis we're facing in the market. Okay, quick test, Russ and everyone. Can you hear me okay? Am I coming through? Uh, a little scratchy there, but we can hear you. Okay. Let's see if I can adjust a thing or two. Any better? Yeah, it's a little, a little better. Maybe bring the volume down a little bit. All right, I'll work that. How's this? Is this any better? Yeah, it sounds good. Okay, great. I appreciate everybody's uh, attendance here and, and uh, hanging around to listen to me talk after Ross has gone ahead. But, you know, I want to make sure you understand what it is I'm about to explain to you. Among other things, crisis investing is actually the answer to one of the questions that many were asking. So how can we get in in real time right as they're buying in? Because the 13F, you know, it's got a little bit of lag, but right, and it's only four times a year. Well, actually, <laughs> the, the the big hedge fund guys, you know, they're not gonna tell you, um, they're not gonna tell you what they got into. 
the day after they got into it. No way. In fact, they're going to try as hard as they can. The information they, they share, they'll share, as Ross points out, because they have to. But just like you cannot walk across a sandy beach without leaving footprints, there is a way to tell, at least get some important clues. The, the most important clue is to know what they are looking at. They the hedge fund guys, the, the large hedge fund guys, the David Teppers, the George Soros, the Ray Dalios, the, the Carl Icahn, and, and, and on and on. The, these guys, they look for crises because crises move the markets in a major direction, one way or the other. And when it's done, the opportunity comes. So that's why I'm going to focus on crisis investing and tell you a little bit about the techniques associated with that for uh, for you to be able to figure out how you could take the Wealth Empire 13F letter and, and supercharge it. We work with Ross, I say we, myself, and, and the other um, mentors and coaches on Ross's team. We work with him as a team because we don't want Ross doing anything else other than analyzing that letter. He is excellent at it. All of us who are uh, on the coaching team, we're traders and investors ourselves. And we get a lot out of working with people one-to-one -one because we feel it's our way of kind of giving back and honing our own skills. But we were super excited to um, each of us in our own uh, to, to get access to the 13F letter. And, and we recognize it as a high value uh publication i mean well I, I i ross told you the price and you saw it for yourself i mean my goodness 99 for an entire year is pretty good really good for the kind for the quality of information that that uh, an analysis that he's doing so sometimes i mean you know if, if all you want to do is buy one newsletter and and just follow exactly what it says great but most people don't do that most people have a variety of information sources how do you put them all together how do you craft it into a strategy that works for you? How do you craft it into a strategy that you can reasonably expect to outperform the market with? That's where we come in. So crisis investing is one of the ways that we as mentors teach people to uh, supercharge their results, to take the alerts from the 13F newsletter or wherever they might come from and, and recognize which ideas are the ones you really want to bet big on? And how do you do it? How do you reduce your risk if you are going to spread out your big ideas and say, well, I'm going to take this one here. I'm going to take that one next. How do you make sure that, uh, you know, you don't put all your eggs in one basket in the right way? Well, that's what we teach. But today I'm going to focus specifically on the tactical principles associated with crisis management. And here we go. These, this is the, the beliefs, the, the concepts that these things are, are based on. So um, investors naturally fear what they don't know. Investors naturally overestimate. Investors naturally calm down once they believe they know enough. So, so those three things together, I mean, this happens no way it's going to change somehow. It's, it's always going to be this way. Something comes up and they get an idea, whoa, there's a problem out there. How big is the problem? I don't know. It could be really big. And I better protect myself. What must I do to protect myself? Well, I, I might have to do a whole lot. The, the overestimation, right? Better safe than sorry. That's our instinct. That's our natural born instinct. And so we always over prepare or overestimate what's going on. And in the big investment world, that means hedging. That means buying options, uh, buying insurance, uh, or, or, or buying other instruments, futures, and so forth. And, and the big guys, when they get worried, when they fear, they go out and they buy, and they buy too much. Now, they begin to calm down once they believe they know enough. And that is our moment of opportunity because what investors believe is the most useful gauge of their future actions. So if, they, if we can somehow see that they believe 
they don't need to worry so much anymore. That tells us the downward move in whatever security is, is being affected by the crisis is likely to end, and a reversion to the mean, if not a brand new upward trend, may be about to begin. There's a tool that helps you do this, measure this, these beliefs in real time. It's called the Volatility Index. The Chicago Board of Options Exchange publishes it. It's better known as the VIX. Simply put, it's a complex math formula built upon option transaction volume in the money out, the money out of the money strikes, front month, second month, so forth. All kind of put together. And, and really what it gets down to is that it measures the amount of protection investors believe they need. So <clears throat> you can kind of think of it as an insurance premium that, that fluctuates in real time. The higher that premium is, the more afraid people are and the more they're worried. But once that premium starts to drop, that's the moment that we can tell investors now believe they know enough. And so that, that move down with some subtlety in how you read it becomes your key indicator in real time of when it's time to step in. The VIX formula can be applied to any liquid instrument that also has options and futures. So most of the time, that's not going to be individual stocks, but it is going to be index, uh, so many indexes, key indexes. So in reading the VIX, you have a tool that helps you make excellent choices when you're trying to do crisis investing. VIX movement can tell you what investors believe in summary form. And a change in the VIX price movement and the trend and the character of it signals a change in belief. The VIX trend tells us what to expect after the crisis is over. Let me give you a good example of this. Now, this is kind of a squished down little chart. We're looking at a comparison the, of the VIX the volatility index, which is specifically connected to the S&P 500. The VIX is the red pointy line, and the S&P 500 is the candle charts down below. And everybody knows that in 2008 and late 2009, the S&P 500 dropped precipitously. And it doesn't look like much of a drop here on this chart because the scale is, is so squished down. That's because this is kind of a percentage scale, and in percentage term, the VIX went up a lot more than the, uh, the, than the index went down, which is typical. That's part of its math. It's not the idea that we can look specifically at, at uh, uh, proportions. We, we really want to see general pe behavior, general pattern behavior. And, and what I pointed out here with these arrows is the notion of the highs and respective lows of the two, the VIX versus the S&P. So the VIX is a mirror index. It, it, if the S&P goes down, VIX goes up. That's typically the way it works. Well, because if you think about it, it's rational. The faster and faster prices go down, the more and more afraid people get and the more and more insurance they want to buy. So there go the VIX goes up, right? Notice where I've got the short arrow We've got a point at which the price has gone lower, but the VIX has no longer gone any higher. Now, it's just a little bit, right? A huge spike. That was the highest the VIX has ever been. And then it comes down, and this is in uh, mid-November. VIX makes uh, a, a pointed up move, but it doesn't go any higher, even though the price does go lower. And then... It's, although that's a little difference, look at what comes in March. This is how you could have told, were you watching way back when, in March 2009, that the worst of 2008 was likely over and that a new upward trend was about to begin. Now, that was a fabulous upward trend in 2009, and it would have been hard for anybody to predict that it was going to go up that fast. But... In fact, none of the big hedge fund guys knew it was going to go up that fast. A lot of them were still bearish. But they were all getting out of their shorts and they were getting into longs. And because they all did it together, the last part of 2009 turned out to be this incredibly fast upward move. One of the fastest upward moves in the history in the last 100 years of, of the market. 
So how could you have known now, right now is the time? Well, this is a weekly chart, and to the week, you can see that once we hit this low, and in this case, we're talking about a low that is um, uh, associated with a peak on the VIX. It's not even half of what it was before. So, so here we made a new low, and we didn't even get anywhere close to the old high. This is a screaming, flashing, neon light signal that says people are done being scared. Investors believe they know enough to handle it from here. And that is the time to be trying to get in. Pretty interesting, huh? Well, could we see anything today? i got to tell you, you know, <laughs> it's a lot more subtle nowadays than it was in 2008 and 9 because that was a, a gigantic crisis. We're not having a crisis in, in uh, U.S. stocks right now. But even in the subtle details and big dips, there are, if you know how to read them, clues that you can catch. So have a look at this one. This is in 2014, just last year. And if you remember, markets kind of went down a bit. So in this case, we've got the VIX now as the candlestick on the bottom and the red line as the S&P. Look at how the S&P hit kind of a low in August and went and made a lower low in middle of October. And, you know, that, that was kind of a, a, a pretty good drop. It's about a 7% drop. But I don't know if you remember, what came from the middle of October onto the middle of November last year was, was the biggest single fastest upward move that the market made all year. And how would you have known it was time to step on the gas? That's what we're going to try and demonstrate to you here by looking at the VIX. So you see the VIX comes and hits a level that was the old low in August. Then when prices get to that same level, to that same area, notice naturally that the VIX is moving above that level, but not just a little bit. It's moving a lot. See, we're, we're a, a good ways up above that old measure, and that tells you people are more afraid and the markets are more likely to go down. Well, for the next few days, the VIX shoots up, but then look what happens. The VIX makes this big gap, and after the gap, it goes down even more precipitously. So after these three days, the VIX is almost back down to the level that it was when people weren't terribly afraid. People were willing to buy the dips. So we're back into buy the dips mode, right? And how about this one? This is the giveaway day. On this day, we get this rather strong upward move in the VIX, but the price of stocks hardly goes down at all. So a little bit of fear, but but that fear isn't really translating into prices dropping. And and, and meanwhile, we're we're down here at the old level. So that tells you this is it. The fear is done. And that would have been a great point to make a jump into because, of course, what came next was a big move. Now, that is that is the kind of thing where you could look around and say, well, just take, for example, GM. Ross mentioned GM is one of the trading ideas that a lot of the guys, Tepper and others, are, are, are kind of into right now. But GM went down in the month of June, and it's kind of leveled off in the month of July. Is now the right time to be getting in? Well, here's the thing. GM is 60% correlated with the Dow Jones Industrial Average and 58% correlated with the S&P 500. So if we were to look at today's VIX and get an idea that, yep, now might be a really good time to buy, then we can have the confidence that the uh, big guys are not, afraid of it going down anymore they're likely to step in and start being buyers that's the theory let's look at how this has generally worked with others because you can apply the vix to other things somebody had asked the question does this work with forex well not all forex pairs but it does with the euro it's all a matter of you know liquidity and and, and so forth the, the euro being highly liquid yeah there's a, a euro vix and the euro vix can be followed this is how you can tell what's going on with Greece. Look at what's happened here. This is the Euro VIX because we don't have a VIX for Greece directly, but the biggest impact of Greece is, well, the Eurozone, right? And therefore the Euro currency. So if we look at the VIX on the Euro, 
and, and we correlate it with headlines in Greece, we can see a very interesting pattern. So back in 2011, and then in 2010 and 2012, we saw the Euro VIX up at a level of around 15, which is pretty high for that indicator. And, and since then, it's gone lower and lower and lower as, as the uh, Euro began to move higher. But then in July, this happened. The Euro fell precipitously, uh, July of 2014. Uh, the Euro made a, a very significant slide, and the dollar made a big run. And the VIX began to increase until we get to the point where we are right now. And where we are right now is interesting because the the although Greece has not defaulted, we are at more risk of Greece defaulting than we ever have been before. And yet the market is just not acting all crazy. It's not acting the way it was in 2011 and 2012 when the uh, headlines about uh, you know Greece uh, problems, Greece debt, and so forth were were so prominent. Uh, we're only here at about 14, whereas before we were nearly on t at 20 in uh, the in, in the worst of it in 2011, summer 2011. So what does that tell you? We should be higher. We should be up uh, above 20 because the headlines are so much worse I mean, in terms of actual possibility that Greece could have a financial failure and default and, and all the bad things that everybody worried about back then. Why are they not worrying more? Why are they not more afraid of it? The answer is, that all the big guys have kind of protected themselves over the past two or three years. They've got themselves uh, uh, hedged and, and taken care of, so they're not as worried. They think they know enough about what's going to happen. Does that mean that, that Europe, the Euro, and Greece, and so forth are going to go up? Well, we, we don't know that exactly. What it's, it's a good bet, though, that at least in the case of the Euro, there's a, a, an upward trend waiting for that to happen. So let's look at uh, one other, China. China's been in the headlines a lot, and China has a VIX that you can, that you can easily look up. Uh, the, the ticker symbol is VXFXI. And if you compare that to FXI, which FXI is kind of like uh, China's Dow, right? So in this chart, China, uh, China's... Dow Jones Industrial Average is, is the FXI. That's the that's little candles. It jumps around a bunch because it trades after hours. I mean, the, you know, the, the Chinese market is moving after hours, and this is only tracking U.S. trading hours. So that's why the, all the gaps. This red line is the VIX on the China market, which is kind of a new instrument. It's only been around for about a year and a half, but that's great for us that it's there now because we can look and notice what's going on. Huge upward move in the VIX, got up to about 45 or so just last month. And now where are we? Not nearly so high. Prices have come down on, on China, but now they've made a bit of a higher low. Now, it's true they could keep going down lower. We saw that in 2008 and 2009. Prices kept going little, lower for a little while. But because we see that the VIX has already made a lower high, a substantially lower high, there's a good bet that China might not be uh, about to collapse lower in a hard and fast way. It might be that there is an opportunity for China-related stocks right now. Uh, let's uh, look at one more, gold. A lot of people are thinking, wow, gold's falling off the earth. Hey, uh, now's a great time to be a buyer, right? Because it's it's so low. Well, there will be a good time to buy gold, but let's pay very close attention to what the what the gold VIX is telling us. Because GVZ, that's a ticker symbol. If if your trading platform has it, you can look up. GVZ uh, is the VIX of gold. And this is really tricky, but but look close at what's happening here. Here's gold having dropped very low and now sort of flattening out. Because it's flattening out, it's natural to consider, hey, could this be a time that it's going to move higher? Um, well, look at what's happening here. In the case of the VIX, it's run up, but has it come back all the way down? No. 
it's only come back down about halfway and um the the price has has kind of leveled but it uh, it, it hasn't started moving up yet see here's the problem if the vix is about to trend higher that means the gold whoops uh, let's see if I can uh, redo that uh, drawing. Uh, that means that VIX, if if, if we're going to trend higher on on gold, trend lower. Uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> higher on gold, VIX. We're going to trend lower on gold. That's what's likely to be going on. So the question is, is this a trend? The easiest way to know whether or not this is a trend is if this starts back up again. So the gold VIX ran up. The the difference. Look at the difference. You can see it. When we were looking at the uh, uh, S&P 500 VIX, it, it shot up, but it came right back down when, when there was this bottom. This thing shot up, but it's only sort of tiptoeing down. That means people are still worried. They don't feel they know enough. They're really not sure when, whether gold is, is done going lower. And they're kind of hanging on to their insurance. That's the way you read this. So while gold might be an opportunity in the near future, right now it's probably best to uh, keep your foot off the gas, if you understand what I mean. Uh, symbol for the China VIX, one more time, FXVIX. Or, or Sorry, no, <laughs> I got that backwards. Here it is, one more time. In fact, I'll type it in, make sure I'm clear. Uh, VXFXI, that's, that's it right there. VXFXI. Um, yeah, so that's that's the thing about gold. Be, be careful about where you're going to take your picks. I think there will be some real good opportunities coming soon, but uh, today, a little scary. All right, now, 2015 may still hold some big opportunities. Why? Well, because the Greece drama is likely overdone. We saw that by looking at the Eurovix. The China correction may be short-lived. We saw that by looking at the China VIX. It's true gold may have more to fall, but think about that. If gold has more to fall, that's money coming out of commodities, and that money has to go somewhere. The VIX indicator tells us when the change has come, but we have to be paying close attention to see where that money is going to land. Can we guess what the big winners would be? If markets are nervous, they're likely to be bonds, healthcare, consumer staples. But if the markets calm down, if people, investors, the big investors feel, we understand this, we know what's going on, then it's quite possible that stocks in general will be going up. And then at that point, once we can determine that's true, we'll see the VIX stay low, we'll see stocks shoot up, and the ideas that are in the 13F newsletter will be among the front runners. That's how you work these things together. Now, even the big guys have to pay close attention to how to manage their positions. They don't just say, well, I got a great idea, and they throw everything in there. They manage their risk. They say, we're going to put some in. We're going to watch for certain things, maybe put some more in, maybe take some out. It depends. It depends on what? What does it depend on? Well, it depends on what the market does. Depends in response to their ideas and response to other global factors that they're tracking. Well, how would you know? You can't be inside their head. Instead, you've got to be inside your own head. You've got to have your own plan. That's the most important thing. Having that plan before you even commit to making the purchase is how you make sure you get the best returns you get these outperforming returns. Most successful traders will tell you the difference between success and failure is having a solid plan to follow because it's proven. It's proven through clinical research and vid individuals are prone to emotion and therefore naturally make lousy traders. That's why you hear these big guys say, well, the average investor can't really expect to outperform the averages. Well, of course not. But it doesn't mean it can't be done. You simply have to have good preparation and know what your plan is for each one of your investment choices. So if you think about it that way, then you understand that you make your money when you prepare, not when you trade. And that 
is the big revelation. Knowing the need to, pl to uh, prepare and knowing how to prepare is the most important thing that you could do in order to take information like Ross's excellent 13F picks and turn them into a rapid wealth building system for yourself. So for those of you who uh, might be interested in learning what it takes to, uh, to, to work with a coach or a mentor um, after you've subscribed to the 13F newsletter, you'll get that opportunity. Just make sure you email uh, or um, uh, the, the Wealth Empire folks and uh, communicate to them that, that you are interested. And uh, there's a way. There's a simple way to find out that information. I want to say thank you for taking time to listen to this today and give you some ideas on how to recognize the ability to uh, do crisis investing. And I'm going to turn the time back now and wish you good trading.